Hi, I'm Scott Ward. I currently work at North Carolina Botanical Gardens as a botanist, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about basic sedge morphology. So Carex is pretty diverse. It's our most diverse genus in North America. There's about 600 species or so, and it can seem intimidating. Some of them are pretty difficult to ID, but a lot of them are pretty distinct. And there are just a few features to look for when you're identifying a Carex. So there are multiple genera in that family, but Carex is the most diverse. Another genus that's really common in uh, especially wetland habitats in the south is Rhinchospora. So Carex, you have this whole thing above ground that's called the culm. It's basically the stem. And so this is the whole culm. You have, so interestingly, with a lot of Carex, they don't have true leaves. They have these bracts that are modified leaves that sit below the inflorescence, which is this, and I'll talk about it in a second. So these look like leaves, but they actually sheath the stem. And then these down here, these non-reproductive leaves, are, are basically sheathing all the way to the bottom. There are some carrots that have true stems and have leaves that come up on the culms. But on most carrots, you can pull these leaves all the way down to the bottom, so they're just sort of sheathing at the base. So anyways, when you really want to get into Carex ID, it really helps to have reproductive material, especially mature reproductive material. And what I, be, what I mean by mature is you will not see stigmas like this or stamens like this on this male spike. You basically want them after they've matured and have formed mature perigenia or achenes. Now, when I say perigenia, that is a really important term with Carex because along these spikes, you have multiple perigenia. And basically, perigenia is unique to Carex. It is a sac-like structure, like kind of like a bladder, that encompasses the achene, which is basically just a very basic stony seed. So that's the basic unit of Carex all the way down to the lowest. You have, so similar to any other flowering plant, you will, you will have these um, stigmas, basically the styles that protrude out of the top of the perigenia, and that's how it catches pollen, more or less, usually wind-pollinated. And following that down, once you get into the perigenia, the style keeps going all the way to the top of the achene. That's your seed. And then um, that basically connects to the base of the perigenia. All of these perigenia together, this is a, a female spike, a pistillate spike or carpellate, form this spike. Some people call this a spikelet, some people call it a spike. They're pretty much synonymous. And when you're looking at this stem, one of the really important characters is how many spikes per stem or per column. So you can see here we have one female, two female, three female, one kind of weird forming one. So this is more or less three complete female spikes and one male spike at the top. So when the male spike is at the top and it's unisexual, meaning it only has male flowers, that's considered um, just a unisexual spike. If it had male spikes, or sorry, male flowers and female spikes below, we would call that a bisexual spike and whether males on top or at the bottom, you know, can be important too. But right there, we already know that this is gonna be different than a lot of other Carex because this has multiple spikes per comb. If it only had one right at the end, we would know it's distinct. And there are multiple groups of sedges that we call sections and they can have differing uh, spike structure depending upon the species. So really, all in all, you know, Carex, are like sedges in, in a number of ways. They usually have trigonous stems, meaning three-sided or triangular in shape in cross-section, but not all sedges have trigonous or three-sided stems, um, or, and some of them will have rounded stems or terete, but it's a pretty good unifying character. And then we have multiple spikes or sometimes single spikes throughout the comb. Once you get into Carex, you will have these perigenia, the shape of them, whether they're smooth or hairy, the size of them is really important, the color of the scales that sit below each perigenia, and then a number of other characters are important too, whether it's rhizomatous or cespitose, um, whether you know the stems have a glaucous bloom on them, and you can usually just kind of rub that off. So all these things seem overwhelming at first, but once you start to learn the group, it's actually pretty simple compared to some other groups.